check out the channel locks that I ran through. I ran it through like two um, ultrasonic cycles with the vibration and then after that it was just heat. Um, so this is a channel lock 410. The rest of these are the 420s. I mean you can see the rust all came off of all these. Um, on the 410 it was pretty pretty heavily rusted up in this area but you can see all the rust is gone but you can still see the pitting on that. Um, as I'm going down the line here you're going to notice about halfway up on these like around where my thumb is. Um, there's a line and what that line is from is where I put the wrench in the solution and the solution would come up and then at that line portion um, is where the solution would stop. So you'd leave it um, and um, handle down and then you'd leave it this way and then it would end up leaving a line where the solution would stop. I hit that with some scotch bright, but I could not get that to come out. Um, but um, overall it turned out very well. You can notice too that they're a little bit darker in gray color. The longer that the uh, solution is used and the darker it gets, a lot of times I'm noticing that the metal itself will have a darker gray color to it. Maybe it's staining it based off of some of the stuff that's still um, in the solution. So this channel lock here was uh, pretty rusted up. You can see on both sides, the rust is gone. It did not mess with the handle. Um, and the maker's mark comes off really great on that one. Um, big channel lock also turned out okay. This one here, um, I couldn't even read the maker's mark on this one, so it came out well. Um, once I was done, just hit them with some WD-40 to make sure nothing um, would re return and um, none of the rust would come back. Um, so let's check out the vise here. The vise turn came out amazing. So you got the movable jaw, the fixed jaw here with the base. Um, if you remember the lead screw, I was trying to figure out how I was going to clean it. I dunked it half and half, um, but it still turned out great. All the rust came off of the uh, lead screw. So I'm kind of debating on what I'm going to do with this vise. I'm probably just going to put it together and list it. But you can kind of see in here, this thing's seen better days. Um, it's been chipped, banged, beat up. But um, it is a eighth all mass vise. So I might just put it together, list it, see what happens. All right, we are live here from, uh, we're self-isolating here. We are exactly, probably maybe four feet away. From the camera, but from we're the like camera. two feet from each other. So we're uh, gonna have to self-isolate together. Yep. But we got some projects to do tonight. We're gonna do some experiments. Hopefully this is not too uh, shaky there. We got some experiments we're gonna do. Uh, Jeremy picked up a hydrosonic. Cleaner? It's an ultrasonic cleaner. It's an ultrasonic cleaner. It is a 30 liter ultrasonic cleaner. You can get them for, they're cheap now. It's $200 and it also has a, uh, a heater on there, like a 500 watt heater. So 
Mm -hmm. um, before we start the video, we uh, turn the heater on. It's at like 125 degrees, the water temperature in there. there it is. Look at it. Let's go check it out. Hold on a sec. So it's just another Chinese, no offense, uh, ultrasonic cleaner. How many gallons does that hold? It's like uh, almost eight. So 125 degrees. Uh, is it still going? 125 F? Yeah. So right now it's at 49 C. Yep. So I guess that's 125 F. So you just adjust the temperature up and down. Mm -hmm. And then is it intensity level or just time? It's just time. time what we were told high. was that the, you should get your water warm and get it up to temperature. And then you should shut off the heater and run the ultrasonic part of it because then it's not um, constrained by the, the current that the heater is drawing. So the, all of the power... Whether it matters or not, I don't know, but it kind of makes sense. But all the power is going into the ultrasonic transducers. So, but we just have uh, distilled water in there, and that's it. I haven't put any detergents in yet. Um, so it just looks like a fish fryer or something. Yeah, yeah basically. Right. Yep. Yeah. Little basket. It's hot. Like you can't keep your hands in there. It's hot. And then there's transducers under the base. Yeah. There's uh, like eight or ten transducers that are spot welded to the bottom of the stainless pan. Mm -hmm. Based yeah. off of what you've seen online, how long do you put stuff in there? Or what's the guidance? I've seen a few things like guy was testing with jars with gasoline in them, 10 seconds. And it was like cleaning up parts like crazy. So we'll probably set it for... Uh, so it had inside had gas? Yeah. So you yeah. had a jar. That way you're not contaminating. Like We're not worried about it right now. We're just kind of checking the thing out. But that way you don't contaminate your bath. You can have jars, but like you use plastic peanut butter jars or whatever, and put whatever you want to put in there, gasoline, acetone, whatever you feel is the best cleaner, and just set that in the bath and just let it float in there. And it's the, the ultrasound, um, however that works, still, um, it'll still get into the, you know, just transfers through the solids. Yeah, where'd you get this one again? Yeah, Amazon, eBay. eBay? Yeah. All right. 200. So we're going to shut this off, the heater. And we're going to bump up the time five minutes. And then we'll, uh, we'll start that when we get our stuff in. We're going to kind of get a reaction, yeah? All right. 